Good morning, Connect Church. Let's thank our team for leading us out, singing the gospel so well. So good to see you on uh, this Sunday morning and, and to think that yet again, we get the opportunity to make much of Jesus, to continue the work of doing everything we can to connect everyone we can with the life-changing gospel of, of Jesus Christ. I bet you you were surprised I said that this morning. I'll tell you what, it is the truth behind what we do and why we do it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to catch up on the Olympics at all. We've not watched much, uh, but yesterday we had a little bit of time in the calendar. And so yesterday was cheering on Team USA, uh, the basketball championship gold medal. And we were watching track and field last night. I was sitting on the couch with my, my daughters. I said, girls, you know what? Next year I, I'm going to try out for the Olympics. I thought I'd get a little chuckle. But the fat shaming that took place from there, I, I, my, one of my daughters went, what? No, you ain't. She said, you're too old, and I have never seen you run. And I was like, where is this coming from, right? Like, and so just, just so you know, I'm not leaving for the Olympics now, and I will stay and, and preach the gospel and joyfully do so today. I, I want to share something, uh, perhaps one of my favorite quotes from uh, the late great English pastor Charles Spurgeon. He said this, my dear friend, when grief presses you to the dust, worship there. I love that. There's so many things in life that can grieve our hearts and our, and our minds, that can, that can press our faces into the very dust beneath our feet. And here's what I know to be true, that if you're not pressed into the dust today, you just might be tomorrow. And for many... You've already experienced seasons and times in your life where the situations and the circumstances around you have pressed you into the dust. Today, I changed course. Um, a couple of hours before our services started today, I, I changed what I was going to preach on, and, and I really believed that I would honor the Lord in doing so and, and really just asking you guys to to join me in the dust this morning, to allow me the opportunity, if you would, to preach from the dust today. You see, Aaron and I and our family, our kids, have, have spent a lot of time pressed into the dust this week. And, and I really want to ask the question and help us to answer it, since this is fresh to us, and since I'm, I'm still really pressed in the dust today, what do we do when we find ourselves there? What do we do when we find ourselves in our lives pressed into the dust of the very earth? Uh, Monday was like this past week for so many, uh, was my kid's first day at school. And, and so uh, this is a picture of them out in the driveway. And, and man, they had a great first day at school. It was great for them. And uh, Man, we just, I love taking them to school, and then Aaron and I both pick them up, and we go to Chick-fil-A in the morning, because that's what the Bible says, and then and then afternoon, you get you get some ice cream. It's just a really good day. They love their teachers, they love their classmates, they love their lunch, and we're firing on all cylinders on Monday, and that was until Monday night. At 3 o'clock in the morning, my, my little Sadie comes into the room, and and, and listen, I, I love my kids, but at 3 o'clock in the morning, all of them are terrifying standing in the doorway. Just so you know, they're just all scary. But she, she came in the doorway, and she said, hey, hey, Mom and Dad, Chloe, which is, is this my blonde-haired, blue-eyed daughter, uh, Chloe, is, uh, she's crying. And, and I think she's falling out of the bed. And so Aaron and I, and we get up, and we run, uh, speaking of running, I do run, we ran to my daughter's room. Um, and, and we found Chloe with her legs wrapped up in her blanket, but her head and her torso bent underneath her bed. And it, it was, something wasn't right. And so Aaron and I pick her up and we put her on the bed and her speech is slurred. She's, she has no idea where she is. It was very peculiar. Now, back up with me a couple of months ago. Uh, something like this happened. Avery came in our room around 3 o'clock in the morning yet again, and, and she goes, Mom and Dad, Chloe's crying. She can't move. 
And so we ran into Chloe's bedroom, and she was laying on her bed. And my 10-year-old little girl, man, she can't move anything. She can't walk. She can't move her arms. Chloe, what, what happened? And she said, well, Mom and Dad, I, I woke up because my, my legs and my arms and my body was shaking, and I, I, I can't move. And, and so we picked her up, and immediately we put her clothes on her. We put her in the truck. I, I fly to LeConte. We take her in a little triage. I said, just check her vital signs. We're not staying here. I'm taking her to children's, but as long as she's living, I, I'm, I'm getting her to children's. And, and, and they said her vital signs were okay. And, and while we were in the truck and even at LeConte, um, her, her lower part of her body convulsed uncontrollably. Terrifying for her and us. By the time we get to children, she had it happened again. And, and after it was done, she was exhausted, but she was able to move again. And by the time I got to children's from LeConte, which I feel like was six minutes later, uh, this whole entire thing had resolved. And, and she, was, she did not want to go in children's. And, and, and we had a pediatrician we would see in just a couple of hours because it was very early morning by that point, and, and we brought her home. But fast forward, they thought maybe dehydration, but fast forward to this past Monday night, we, we pick her up and we put her in her bed, and, and something's just not right, and so we take her and we put her in bed with us. And it's about 3.30 now, and put her in bed, and she quickly falls asleep. She was scared. Confused, but, but so would we. We fell out of the bed in the middle of the night and we put her in bed. And about 30 minutes later, my, my little girl wakes up screaming, It's happening again. And for the next two minutes, goes into a seizure. Her head flew back, her eyes wide open, her stare blank. And that little 10 year old body's at first just convulsing struggling to breathe. It was, listen, for those of you guys who've gone through it, terrible, terrifying. I jumped from the bed and Aaron was holding her and I I went to go get dressed because we were in a new neighborhood, a new home, and and I thought the ambulance is not going to be able to find us. So I'm going to go wave him down at the road. and, And so I called 911 and the guy was so incredibly professional and but what's the address? He said, it's here. We're in a new neighborhood. I'm going to go flag y'all down. He said, what's the emergency? He said, my daughter's having a seizure. You got to get here quick. Is she sweat? I don't know. Just get here quick. And he asked me all the questions he was supposed to ask me. And I, I just said, buddy, listen to me. She's having a seizure. Get here fast. And I hung up the phone. We held our daughter. And what seemed like hours, the two minutes in which she had the seizure was, was done. She was exhausted and could not move. Aaron and I were holding her as she wept and cried. You see, we asked Chloe, Chloe, do you know what happened? And she said, I was awake the whole time. And we, we no, no, you weren't. We, we watched you. She said, Daddy, I, I, I could hear everything you were saying, but my body... My body could not respond. It, I didn't know that happened in seizures until the doctor and the neurologist later on would say, yes, it does happen in rare cases. And, and the neurologist says, and that's the worst kind of seizure because she was aware the whole time. The ambulance got there and they were so wonderful. And Aaron and I were holding our baby and fixing to load her up into this ambulance to go to children's. And church, I want you to hear me. We were pressed into the ambulance. Heartbreaking. Mama got to ride in the ambulance because I, I think that's probably in the Bible that mom always gets to ride in the ambulance. And dad follows with the truck. And, and I followed the ambulance towards children. And, and I stayed about this far from the bumper because you can look in the little windows in the back. And I just want to keep eyes on my daughter. I've been in ministry a long time, and I've been around babies who've died and children who've died and children who've had seizures. And I know this, that what if she has another one and she dies? What what if she goes into a coma or there's brain damage? What if they can't stop it in the ambulance? It's just, man, I'm going to tell you something, church. Look, pressed 
into the very dust. As I followed that ambulance, we get to children's and for hours they ran tests and the emergent nature of her seizures was now over and but the litany of texts for days and all the days this past week we were at Children's Hospital and my, my little girl hooked up to every monitor you could imagine and every test was being done. We have, I, I preach from the dust today because there's no answers. Except for there's more compounding problems in that when they did the EKG, there were signs on her EKG that she has a heart condition that is potentially serious and life-threatening that we never knew about. Is that what caused the seizures? The cardiologist doesn't know. He doesn't think so. But we're on monitors and on heart medicine. Neurology is trying to figure out, is this epilepsy? What type of seizure this is? And, and, and nobody knows anything today. That's why we're preaching from the dust this morning. Tired. Exhausted. And as we've, as a family, have found ourselves just pressed into the dust together, I know this too. I, I preach to a people this morning that if you're not on, in the, pressed into the dust today, you've been in the dust before. And listen, if you say today, Anthony, I'm not pressed into the dust, you just might be tomorrow. And so since this is so fresh, and since I can preach from that dust today, Hey, can I remind you of some things? For when you find yourself pressed into the dust by the situations and circumstances of this life, hey, can I remind you of a few truths that I know to be true? And that is this, number one, that God is good. I know this from the dust, that God is good, Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. I'm going to tell you something. I have spent all week with my wife and my kids, especially my Chloe, pressed into the dust. And every bit of the time, at every turn, we have tasted and seen that God is good. And I've learned from the dust this week that God is good. That God is faithful as well. I love Lamentations 3, verse 22 through 23 that says this, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. For great is your faithfulness. Never once has God been unfaithful as we've been pressed into the dust. And never once will He be unfaithful to us. God does not abandon, nor does he leave his kids when we are pressed into the dust of this life. God is faithful. You know what I love about God is at 3 a.m. on Monday night, I didn't have to wake him. He was already awake. Hey, I didn't have to tell him what was going on. He was already aware. I didn't have to ask him for his peace because he was already dealing it. God is faithful. And I sit back and think of all the times in my life, sometimes daily, where I'm unfaithful to him. God has always been faithful. There's another truth that, that I don't just merely preach today, but that we have lived this week. And that is that God is near. God is near. I love this Psalm 34, 18. That the Lord draws near to the brokenhearted and he, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. That God is never more near his kids than it seems than when we hurt. And at every point this past week, from the scary moments at 3 a.m., to the hospitals, to the appointment after appointment, to the tears of my daughter, who doesn't know what this means. God has been near. He's been faithful. And God is good even in the dust. And so what do we do there? What happens when our lives are pressed into the very dust of life? You know what we do there? Church, you ready? 
we pray there. We pray there. I love the psalmist in Psalm 34, 4. He says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Hey, you ready? Pray in the dust. As I was following the ambulance, I was just watching my daughter. I, I can't get out of the mind the way she, my mind the way she looked. And she was having a seizure for every parent. Just watch their child do it. Just it can't. Every time I close my eyes, every time I go to bed, it's just I, I can't get over her face and her body. I just I can't. I was watching her in that ambulance, praying that I just wouldn't see that again uh, through the window, thinking how am I going to jump on the ambulance and get in there while it's going fifty miles an hour down the road? I I just didn't want to. I didn't want to see it. We got to the hospital, Erin told me, she said, uh, we were riding, and, and this is hard on Mama. Oh, this is so hard on Erin. She said, we were riding in the ambulance, and Chloe was uh, whispering. And Erin bent down and said, Chloe, I, I can't hear you. And Chloe said, Mama, I'm just praying. I'm talking to the Lord. Lord, would you help me not to have another one of those seizures? Help me not to die. Lord, would you watch over me? See, in the dust, you can pray there. My little girl taught me just that. You know, uh, as you can imagine, Chloe's bed is now our bed. She sleeps in between Aaron and I every, every night now until we figure out what's What's going on? And I'm fine with her doing that into her 60s, right? Uh, as of today, we are good. Uh, Chloe comes and lays in, and, and I sleep up on some pillows, and she always lays right here. I'll hold her, and we always kind of banter back and forth. We did this last night. I was like, Chloe, man, I love you. I prayed over her, and, and so let's go to sleep. She goes, hey, Dad, don't roll over on me. <laughs> okay, babe, look, I don't want to add to your fear, okay? Look, I, I'll make sure there's a pillow here. We don't to roll over in the middle of the night. But I found myself, I, I can't sleep at night right now. I just, I wake up every move she makes. Every time she talks in her sleep. You, you know how it is, parents. And we're just not sleeping much. I hate 3 o'clock in the morning. I hate it. But what's been amazing is that God has take, taken the sleeplessness of our nights and turned them into these incredible prayer moments over our little girl who's asleep. Aaron and I'll just pray over her, pray down God's blessing. Because you see, what's amazing about our faith and about our God is that when, when we're pressed into the dust, you and I can still pray there. And so now at 3 o'clock every night almost, I wake up and I check on my daughter. and I spend time with the Lord and I spend time bringing her to Jesus through prayer. It's become some of the sweetest times because what do you do when pressed into the dust? You pray there. But you also, you also worship there. I love this in Psalm 46, 1 through 2, that, that God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been scared to death on multiple occasions this past week. I've worried. Had a little bit of anxiety going to bed. Just, God, don't let her wake up that way. And, and what happened a few nights ago. To, man, there's just been a lot going on for Aaron and I and our family. I, I'm telling you, we've been pressed into the dust. But I'm going to tell you what has been sweet, and that is worshiping Him there. Lifting my eyes into the hills. For where does my help come from? My help comes from the, the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, and the maker of Chloe May Kindle. The very one who loves her, even though I can't grasp this infinitely more than her mom and I do. She's his daughter. And he loves her. And so throughout this week, we've not gotten out of the dust yet. That's why I've asked you to let me preach from the dust today. We're not out of it yet. But at every point... Every time we lift our eyes to Him in worship, 
he has brought peace that doesn't make sense. And joy that has sustained and his presence through his spirit that never leaves us. Hey, church, when you're, when you're pressed into the dust, worship him there. But not only pray there, not only worship him there. We've got to trust him there. Trust him from the dust. Psalm 91, 2, he is my refuge and my fortress, the psalmist says, my God in whom I trust. Let me tell you what I know to be true today, standing here on Sunday morning, that not at one point did he ever abandon me or my wife or my precious daughter or my kids to the dust. God does not abandon us to the dust. The author of Hebrews reminds us in chapter 13, verse 5, that that God has said this, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. And here's the beauty of the gospel. Here's the beauty of our faith, that when we are pressed into the dust of this life, guess what? Jesus, through his spirit, gets in the dust with us. He never abandons us. He never abandons us. And he never leaves us forever in the dust. I love what the psalmist says in Psalm 3.3, But thou, O Lord, art shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I'm going to tell you, after the events of Monday night, I have found myself oftentimes just my head down, overwhelmed. my, my, My daughter's broken, I can't fix her. What happens when the next one takes her? Just everything. I found my head down. And yet time and time again, the Lord through his spirit has lifted my head when I couldn't. Has lifted my head when I didn't feel like I had the strength to do so. He's lifted my head. He's lifted my wife's head, my precious little Chloe. He's lifted her head. And that's why in the dust, I trust him. And you know what? I I take him up on his invitation, church. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Uh, Let me tell you something. Aaron and I have not slept. We've not been given that type of rest here. But there is a rest far greater than that. And that is a rest when your daughter is seizing in an ambulance, hooked up to machines. It is the rest that comes over your soul through his spirit. Where though everything seems out of control, he reminds you it's going to be okay. That he has this. That God's got this. And God's got my little girl. And so we've answered Jesus' invitation a thousand times. While our faces are in the dust, and we've just come to him, weary and burdened. And he's given us rest on Tuesday night. We had spent all night in the hospital. We finally got Chloe home. She's tired, and everybody's so tired. We're fearful a little bit of the night because this is when this has happened. Will it happen again this next night? And what do we do? Do we. Call an ambulance, it's just all of these things. And, and so we did what we always do on the night times. We opened the Bible, and I read some of the passages I've read to you today to her and the family. And we have a, a piano at the house, and so I, I pulled out the seat, and I, I opened up the piano. And, and for us, we worship every night. I play either the piano or the, or the guitar, and we just we sing to the Lord. I, I know we're a contemporary church, but, um, but I always play the hymns. I, I want my kids to to also know the hymns that, that I grew up on when I finally began going to church. And, and so we do hymns, but not Tuesday night. Tuesday night we did a song that uh, we do here at Connect Church that simply talks about trusting in God, my Savior, the one who never fails. And I sat there at the piano and Chloe came and she sat right next to me. And we sang that. And my little girl put her hands in her, up to her face, and put her face down, and she just wept. And she wept. And mama and daddy cried and they cried. 
we find ourselves in the dust that we never wanted to be in, with a seizure she never wanted to have, in an ambulance that we never wanted to be in, in a hospital that we love but we want nothing to do with. And we found ourselves pressed into the dust, barely able to see, but finding ourselves trusting in God alone for our little girl. Because you see, when pressed into the dust by situations and circumstances outside of our, our control, what have we to do but to celebrate the truth of who God is? That God is good, that God is faithful and God is near. To find ourselves pressed into the dust and to there pray, to worship there, and to trust in Him. What dust are you pressed into today? Hey, what, what, what in life has pressed you into the dust in your past? What is it that you fear in the future? That might press you into the very dust because you know what? It has been a dust storm for the Kendall family this week. But I'm here to tell you on Sunday, not because it's just something I, I preach or something that I'm paid to do. I am preaching from the dust today telling you that God is good. God is faithful. That God is near. And I'm asking you to join me in the dust today. To pray with me there. To worship with me there. And to trust in God with me in the dust. I want to invite you to do something as that comes. I want to invite you in our family worship from Tuesday night sing a song that we had to do so without words most of the time and through a lot of tears. Are you reminded of what we do when we're pressed into the dust? Where is that? Sing, I sought the Lord. Oh, and I sought the Lord and He heard and He answered I sought the Lord and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why. I oh, trust this is what him. happens when pressed why into the I dust. Trust him. I oh, sought the on, Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God. You're my Savior. You're the one who will never fail. Who will never fail. He will never fail. So I trust in God. You're my Savior, you're the one who will never fail. He will never fail. So church, you can remain standing. Let me ask you, what is it that we do when pressed into the dust? That right there. That right there. We know that He's good and faithful. We're reminded that He's always near. We pray there. We worship there. We trust in Him from the dust that we've been pressed into. Hey, but can I share one challenge with you? For those in this place today 
who have faced not only the dust of this life alone, but the entirety of your life alone. Hey, can I share this with you? You don't have to anymore. Do not face the dust alone. Why? Because the God we serve so loves us that he sent his son Jesus, you ready? And crushed him in the dust on the cross so that by his death we may live. Three days later, God raised his son Jesus and the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in each of us. He doesn't always remove the times when we're pressed into the dust, but he joins us there. And there are some of you who have gone all of your life and in every season in the dust alone without him. Not another day. Not another day. Give him your heart and your life today. Let's pray again. We, as we pray, And there are some of you who have gone through this life and through the dust alone. And you need to know that there is a God who loves you, who sent His Son Jesus to die for you, to be your life, so that no matter what you face, no matter the dust you're pressed into, you never go it alone. Because God is good and God is faithful and He's near to His children. So you can pray there, and you can worship there, and you can trust Him there. But that all begins by trusting Him in faith for your salvation. And some of you, let me ask you, are you tired of going through the dust alone? Are you tired of going through life alone? And right now, why not cry out to Jesus to save you? Pray something like this from your heart to His, dear Jesus, I am I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Please save me. I place my faith and my trust in you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for rising again. I give you my life. Would you help me turn from my sin and myself? Jesus, I am yours. And with nobody looking this morning, hey, some of you prayed that with me. I will not embarrass you. I I will not come to you. But, hey, you prayed that with me this morning. And I just want the great honor today of just seeing your face. I may not even know your name, but I can pray for your face. Hey, Pastor, I prayed that with you this morning, and I asked Jesus to save me. Would you just look here real quick? Hey, can I I see your eyes? I'm going to look over every face, sir. I see you. I see you, buddy. And somebody else, it's me. I see you, sir. And somebody else, Pastor, I prayed that with you. I'm just going to look over every face. Make sure my my eyes meet yours. If you're looking at me, I want to see you. And I asked Jesus to save me, sir. I see you. Ma'am, I see you. Somebody else, it's me. Just another moment of just every face, and there's a lot of faces. Pastor, I prayed that with you. And I asked Jesus to save you. Sir, I see you back there. I do. I see you, young lady. I see your tears. I see you. Man, we celebrate what God's doing in your life. And hey, listen, if you looked up at me, we want to do everything we can to help you take your next steps of faith. There's a number on the screen you can text your name to. And there's a next steps tent even in the back as you leave, that you can stop by and say, hey, I pray with Pastor Anthony. We got a Bible. We got some resources. But here's the deal. I want to connect with you. We want to call and celebrate what God's doing and help you take your next step of faith. Hey, church family, can I get everybody to look up here? Hey, can we just celebrate real quick those decisions of faith? I I want to do this before we... uh, before Pastor Jim comes out and he kind of closes us out. I, I want to say this one last time because I need to say it out loud for me because it's really easy to say it in here. But tonight it's a whole lot harder. And pressed into the dust, God is good. He is faithful. And He's near. 
And when pressed into the dust, pray there, worship there, and trust Him there. Let's sing this one last time before we go. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary is more. So I trust in God, my Savior. I sought the Lord. Let's sing it. Oh, and I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. Answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. Yes, you're my Savior. You're the one who will live. sing blessed assurance blessed assurance oh Jesus is mine and you've been my fourth man in the fire time after time thank you father for being that fourth man in the dust in the fire in the storms of this life. And thank you that, Father, when the situations, the circumstances of this life press us to the dust, God, you're even good there. You're faithful there. And you are near. And so, Lord, when these seasons in the dust come, may you find us praying there, worshiping there, and trusting you there. Father, thank you for being a God who is worthy of all worship and praise, even from the dust. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Connect Church Online, for being a part of this morning's service. Uh, and we hope that was beneficial. I, I know that we talk about Pastor Anthony's daughter, Flo, and, and just the, the personal, just real life part of this. And uh, as you know, that's my little niece. And so uh, this has been, for our family, a week of praying and, and seeking the Lord, uh, just seeking His face in times where we don't understand and what we don't know what's going on. I hope that this has been an encouragement to you as you face the, the dust of life and, and trying to walk faithfully with Jesus. Know this, that if uh, when you gave your life to Jesus today, we want to celebrate along with you.
We want to we want to make it much of Jesus, just to save you and, and, and celebrate that. But we also want to be able to be a resource for you. So on the screen, you're going to see a number, and if you'll text your first name and last name to that number, our team would love to reach out to you, uh, give you some resources, help you in what it looks like to follow after Jesus, um, and and really make that relationship grow and grow and grow as you learn and look more like Jesus. I want to let you know, too, that we talk about all the different things that are happening, barbecue and baptism, all these different things. Uh, And that's impossible without your generosity, that you trust the Lord with your treasure. And so thank you so much for continuing to trust the Lord in all of that. I I want you guys to know that though you may be online, some of you are traveling, you're normally here and all that, some of you guys are unable to come for some reason or, or maybe don't watch us or don't get to join us, but just watch us online. Hey, we're thankful for you. Uh, we're grateful for the time that you spend here, and, and we want to be a resource. We don't want to just be some far-off people. So please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to help you all along the way. Connect Church, we, we pray that you would take this, and even in the dust, when we feel like we cannot stand, and remember Jesus. And uh, we want to be there alongside you in those times. Connect